You know, I've been seeing a lot of people complaining about the citizenship bill and the changes that the BJP government has made into the citizenship bill so minorities from Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan can come into India. And I want to quickly address them today. My name is Sham Sharma. Welcome to the Sham Sharma Show. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. Okay, so from our history, we have learned that wherever Hindus become slightly less than the majority, soon after that, they're essentially wiped out. They either become a tiny, minuscule minority, or they're pretty much completely wiped out. And so we know that that happens, and so it is our duty to help the Hindus and the Sikhs that are stuck in these countries clinging on to survival as the last stand for Hindus in the world. India has a dharmic duty there. So I think in accordance to that, a new citizenship was introduced by the Bharatiya Janata Party, which amends the Citizenship Act 1955 to allow Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from Bangladesh, Afghanistan and Pakistan to apply for Indian citizenship. It doesn't automatically make them Indian citizens. That's what a lot of people have been saying that, oh, it just immediately makes these people Indian citizens. No, that's not what it happens. The proposal is that it amends the Schedule 3 of the Act to make applicants belonging to minority communities from the aforesaid countries eligible for citizenship by naturalization in seven years instead of the existing 12 years. So they are now eligible to apply. They're not automatically made citizens. They are eligible to apply. Also, in 2015 and 2016, the government passed two notifications exempting such immigrants from the Foreigners Act 1946 and the Passport Entry into India Act 1920. Now, both of these acts provide for deportation of these people, but then the, these refugees coming in were made exempt from these acts. And it enables these people to continue living in India even if they had arrived before 31st of December 2014. So on paper, if we look at it, if we look at the dharmic aims of our country, the dharmic aims of our civilization, I think we want to be and we should strive to be a place where Hindus and Sikhs can come and feel safe. So two main objections to this bill is, the first one is that it violates Article 14 of the Constitution, which basically provides equality before law or equal protection of the law to every person in India. And the second objection that people have is something that was mentioned in first post quite well, is that in fulfilling this promise, the central government is implicitly defining India as the Hindu homeland, something that the Hindutva Brigade have done for a long time. Now, first things first, you know, these people that are being invited to come to India, seek refuge in India and apply for citizenship in India, these are people that are being brutally suppressed and brutally discriminated against in the countries that they're being invited from. And they're facing a serious existential threat. Young Hindu girls in Pakistan are being abducted from their families, converted to Islam and married off to older Muslim men. And the families of these young girls have no recourse. The police won't help them. The politicians won't help them. These people are being killed for being kafirs. Even if the whole society doesn't support these things, there is a pretty significant section of these societies that give either explicit or implicit support to these activities. So that's the first thing. And looking at Article 14 as well, the Supreme Court has some interesting findings on that article. The Supreme Court finds that the principle of equality does not mean that every law must have universal application for all persons who are not by nature attainment or circumstances in the same position as the varying needs of different classes of persons often require separate treatment. It would be inexpedient and incorrect to think that all laws have to be made uniformly applicable to all people in one go. We could also said that the concept of equality allows for rational or discriminating discrimination. Also, it is not as if our constitution does not have discriminatory practices. Explicitly discriminates in favor of the downtrodden, like the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes. Higher court judgments have actually also ask for creating a reservation system for just Muslims. There are also laws within our legal system that unduly favor minorities. For example, the Right to Education. The Right to Education Act exempts unaided minority institutions from under its purview, from under its umbrella. But Hindu institutions are part of the RTE umbrella. So there are these discriminations that happen if the legal system believes that there are grounds that these people are being discriminated against and that there should be 
certain laws or certain legal provisions created to help these people. And I believe that these extenuating or these exceptional circumstances apply to the Hindu Sikhs and other minorities that are escaping persecution and death in Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan as well. So I think those exceptions apply to those people as well. And when it comes to the second objection that India is being painted as some sort of a Hindu homeland, then yes, because it is a Hindu homeland. It is the last place that Hindus have left. Just like the Jews have Israel as their last resort, the Hindus and the Sikhs of the world have the last resort as India. In fact, I think that Hindus should lay down a ground rule when it comes to certain basic civilizational principles. This should be one of the principles that I feel like most Hindus should agree on is that India is the Hindu homeland. Now, when I say Hindu homeland, it doesn't mean that Hinduism should be viewed as higher or superior uh, than all the other religions and all the other cultures in India and that Hinduism should be adopted as the state religion. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is that Indian people, Indian politicians should accept India to be the Hindu homeland. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We give out a message to the Hindus and Sikhs of the world that if you are in a place where you feel like you're being persecuted, if you feel like you're being heavily discriminated and there's a threat on your existence and your life, come to India. It is your homeland. And I feel like that is a ground rule that, that most Hindus should agree on and should lay down and that we should even pressure political parties that are running for office in India that you should have that as one of your planks. Now, I know that everybody's not going to agree on that, but I honestly feel like historically at least over the past couple of hundred years we've been a little too polite and a little too agreeable with everything we need to set down some ground rules and i think this is a good ground rule to begin with and i want to hear your thoughts on this as well what do you think about this whole citizenship at what do you think about creating this ground rule as well let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below because i'd love to hear them also guys thank you very much for watching today's episode if you enjoyed today's episode you can go ahead and give this episode a thumbs up give it a like it helps me out it helps the channel out also you can go ahead and subscribe to the show's channel down below over there or over here i will see you for the next episode and until then stay happy stay healthy and i'll see you soon